Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and entrepreneurial success. And helping us along today is our guest, Kelly Fisher. Kelly Fisher is a renowned hypnotherapist that is changing the world as we speak. Known for his no-nonsense, no-fluff, and quick results, Kelly is a sought-after hypnotherapist. Passionate about ending mental suffering, thank God, Kelly has co-authored numerous books to get the message out. He has taught his programs from the stage everywhere. As an entrepreneur himself, Kelly understands the power of overcoming self-doubt and anxiety with the capital A. Kelly has been helping people for over 25 years get in control of their thought, feeling, emotion process for dramatic, life-changing results. Kelly's life motto is slow your mind down to the speed you're living just, I'm going to repeat that because I read it about five times this morning and it's so good. Slow your mind down to the speed you're living. I'm taking great care with that. Welcome to the show, Kelly Fisher. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. I am thrilled that you are here. I am also thrilled that you are speaking about what you're speaking. This is just something that is so important to me, so important to the people um, that listen to my podcast and those who don't listen to my podcast should just to hear what you're going to say. Right. So you've been a th- hypnotherapist for a long time. Did you do other work before that? Uh, I was a personal fitness trainer back in the day. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah so I, I really combined the mind and body. Actually, my first book was released last year. It was called uh, Weight Loss from the Inside Out because of my two careers that I've had. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I got hooked into the, um, I didn't gain the 15 pounds that people say they've gained, but I did go to the carbs during this past few year, I should say. Right. Carbs are not my friend. No, no, no carbs after five. <laughs> yeah, no carbs after 5 a.m. Um, <laughs> so talk to us a little bit how, you, you said you'd be talking about giving tips, tricks, and hacks Sure. on how to end anxiety and stress in your business and personal life. I yes. know the audience is interested. So talk about, give us a story about somebody that you've helped recently. Um, sure. I just want to say that slow your mind down to the speed you're living. That's the secret. That's the answer. That's the whole solution. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of reminds me of Alan Watts when he came out and said one time, he's like, if I want to teach you about Zen, I would ring this bell and just leave the stage. I mean, right. a very profound Zen message. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the slowing down to the speed you're living. It's uh, well, I just had a, a client recently signed up with me two weeks ago and um you know, business owner, uh, th- three or four businesses, and mm. stressed out, anxious, a short fuse. Um, you know, these are all his words, of course. And just even with his uh, business partners, his wife, his mother and father. Oh, sure. Yeah, just a three-year-old boy. I mean, we had a lot in common. He grew up a hockey player, and I, me too, in Chicago. I grew up as a hockey player, and I have a three-and-a-half-year-old son. So, yeah, I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, you know, he didn't want to lash out at his son. and, and act, You know, he, so he, that's why he reached out to me. And, you know, so, since a lot of times the business owners come in and they're so serious that it's, okay, it took me like 40 minutes to break down. Oh, well, my father had a short fuse. Ah, here we go. (laughs) Here we go. So, you know, we don't have to go back and replace those triggers, especially in the first session. I just take them through a very positive uh, hypnotherapy session, uh, the first session. But uh, after the second week, he said he had so much benefit that he noticed while people were saying things, he remembered what we went through because it's in the subconscious mind and he's acting different already. And he actually just referred his wife to me. She started with me Saturday also. So, 
Um, yeah, just, just the tools, I mean, just the conscious tools when I teach, uh, and then let alone the subconscious. It's all programmed in. Uh, I do an hour session. The last 15 minutes, I record the audio part, send it to them. They listen twice a day. And just, it's like, I always compare everything to the gym because I used to be a personal trainer. And it's just like going to the gym every day. Guess what? I'm in great shape because I go to the gym every day. And so you listen to that every day. We get together the next week, and it's literally just you're literally vibrating at a different level. Your 70 trillion cells in your body are all listening and changing. So that's why I said it's, it's not, you don't get great change because I'm a great hypnotherapist. I'm the template, the guide, and I take you through. So it, all the change happens inside of you so you can take it with you. So that's, that's why it's so powerful. Yeah, years ago, I used uh, hypnotherapy to stop smoking. And mm. uh, we're talking a long time ago. And... Um, I date myself if I spoke much more on it, but I had tried other, you know, I tried self-control. I tried all of this and in one day, you know, and then the, took the tape home to listen to it. And w- within the week I was done mm. and I could, you know, from that time on, I could not stand the smell of it. You know, people say, Oh, I could still, you know, I smell it and I could still want a cigarette. Never. And hypnotherapy was good, and I know I am susceptible to hypnotherapy. Uh, mm-hmm. So I have to be, you know, cautious and yep. smart, especially with what's going on out in the world, because I'm easily influenced on a certain level. Yeah. Um, but people, I think hypnotherapy is wonderful. You know, um, that's why I do repeating my own mantras day after day after day, because it works. For me, it works quickly on the good side as well. You know, I say X, Y, Z, and the next day the phone rings. So those are the ways I like it to work. Yeah. Do you get resistance from your clients? Um, Resistance? Um, No, not necessarily because, you know, hypnotherapist is always the last resort. (laughs) So they've been to the the psychiatrist. Uh, You know, I had a client a couple months ago. She was with the therapist for five years because 10 years ago she had an anxiety attack on the freeway. She couldn't drive on the freeway anymore and she got a new job and she had to drive on the freeway. So Mm -hmm. she was with the therapist and they had her on medication and all that Mm -hmm. good stuff. I said, you get any closer to an on-ramp? She said, no. I'm like, "Mm, so much for that. So we're working together, and the first, uh, the second session, I said, listen, now, you're going to, uh, Sunday afternoon, when you're relaxed at home, you're going to go to the on-ramp, you're going to drive up one ramp and get off the first ramp. And later on, when I did a video testimonial with her, she goes, she goes, I thought this guy was batshit crazy. He asked me <laughs> to go on the freeway the second session. I said, but you did, but you did. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's always the last resort, but it works. And, you know, they've been through the conscious therapy, and, you know, how does that make you feel? Makes me feel like crap. That's why I'm here. Why are we still talking? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of good therapists out there, but you know, I just, understand. Talk therapy is just not that. You know, it's, just tell it's me like, about yeah. No, I was going to say it's like Einstein said: you can't fix the problem from the level of thought that created the problem. That's right. what he's talking about. You know. Yeah, I, I, I say you can't fix this broken screwdriver with the same broken screwdriver. You need another tool. <laughs> yeah, most people are still stuck at that first level. You know, they're just very stuck at the mom and dad level and what they learned uh, the day they were born. What did I read yesterday? That when a baby a baby is not really a baby when they're born, they have a brain that's about the size, you know, the, the consistency of a potato. So mm-hmm. whatever the parents say, do, or feel around that child, that's what that kid gets right away. And boy, those things are implanted they they don't have a conscious thought a conscious part of the mind rather until six or seven years old and you know i have a three and a half year old son so i love teaching him and people are always like what do you what he what do you want him to be when he grows up i'm like he chose us as parents i can't wait to find out this is right you know you're overshadowing soul your soul group you know get out take the red yeah, pill yeah you. you know what i'm saying you choose your parents you come down you incarnate and you know you just no when i see little babies or little kids actually my wife has a home daycare so i'm around kids all oh the time. okay I love uh, their imagination. I just go down there, Papa. Don't step in the, step in the lava. I'm like, oh, where's the lava? I, I stepped in it. Oh my god, their imagination is incredible. It's it's when I get around kids, they love me so much because I know where they just came from, and they're right. looking at me like, wait a second, he's one of us, but he's a grown up. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, the, I I would go into grocery stores and I would see the you know the pre toddlers in the carriage with their parents and if they were under two i was home you know i would go up and talk to them they would talk to me or they would 
eyeball me from, you know, several feet away. And the mother goes, why you? You know, I said, hey, don't know what to tell you. Right. Because if they couldn't figure it, think about it, I didn't want to yeah. get in the way, you know, of their yeah. teaching their own children. And right. in fact, you know, I was talking to my <clears throat> son yesterday about his son, who was my grandson. I, and there was, you know, some issues. And I said, you have to remember that he chose to be, he chose you to be his parent. So yep. you're there for a reason. Everybody's got a reason for being in the Shakespearean play. People forget that. That's, that's where a lot of parents get off balance because they think they're, they're entering the child's world. It's the other way around. Child's Correct. Entering the world. Yeah. I had a, um, one of my wife's friends before we got pregnant. It's like, well, forget about exercise. Forget about meditation. Forget about date night. He went through this whole list. I'm like, holy cow, dude. I, so like the first day I brought my boy home, uh, he's in the crib. I'm meditating in the corner. I said, take a picture of me because I want to let people know that nothing changes. I'm still doing the exact same thing. You know, it's, it's the schedule's a little tighter <laughs> because I have to take care of him, but I still meditate twice a day. I still go to the gym every single day. I still do what I do. And he, he, you know, he's in part of my world. We went to the art store yesterday and picked out some stuff. I'm doing a painting and just, you know, I love it. I love that he, he entered my world and chose to. It's, it's amazing. Well, you have to live your life. That's what it's really all about. They have yes. to see you living your life as it works for you. Yes. When people complain and, 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 and moan and whine about having one or two children and they're 20 or 30, you know, they're not 40 or 50. I go, what is your problem? In yeah. my mind, I don't complain right. to people about that. But it's like, this is easy peasy. You've got all the energy in the world. Just do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So it's not, I mean, I had three children under nine that I raised virtually pretty much, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, but I was, you know, a mile from the house and you mm -hmm. do what you have to do. And they get now my son is telling his son how grandma took care of him mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and raised him and, you know, gave him a good example of living a good life and taking yep. care of others. So it works if you pay attention. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I love just sitting there looking, watching his eyes as he watches the world and watch his little brain turn. It's just, it's so much fun. Yep. So much so fun. So what actionable steps can you give our audience today? Um, actionable steps. Well, if, um, if you've never meditated before and you close your eyes, the conscious mind you're listening with right now will speed up and be ready for that. <laughs> you're going to be sitting in the corner going, what are we doing? We don't have time for this new age crap. Wake up. We got work to do. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> as right. long as you know that going in, this yip yip dog, I call it, this conscious roof chatter that we think we are. People think they're their story going through their head like the CNN ticker tape going by. Mm -hmm. You are not. And when you get into meditative practice, you'll get into where Deepak Chopra calls the gap. There'll be like three, two or three seconds, four seconds, all of a sudden you don't know where you're at. And then that conscious mind comes in again. What are we doing? That three or four seconds is meditation. That gap will get bigger and bigger with, uh, I was going about to say exercise, <laughs> with practice, just like exercise. And so you, it's, it's, it's a practice. You have to practice it. You have to, you know, the first couple of times, it might not slow down at all. That's why I do guided visualizations because you just follow my voice and I take you through. And even when I do that, I, I put gaps in there where I allow them to do the work internally and then I come back in. So know that it's a practice. Um, you know, I, so many people, especially like my wife's daycare, uh, she comes over like Cheryl's having an anxiety attack. I'm like, send her upstairs. <laughs> I'm in my home right. office. I set her on the chair. She's like, you don't understand what I'm going through. I'm like, I do. I do. Trust me. Just close your eyes. <laughs> You've never meditated before. Just close your eyes. And, you know, I take, I said, I'm going to record this, listen to it. And she's like, well, my, my mind didn't shut off. I'm like, that's okay. Not today. It didn't. That's okay. But do this every day. I promise you. I promise you it will slow down. Yeah. They'll get to the emptiness. Yeah. Yeah. So that miracles can occur. Yes. Yes, yes. And just, uh, you know, I, I mean, I work with a couple basic funnels that I've developed over the years. I've been doing it so long. And one of the main ones is thought, feeling, emotion. And everybody spinning on this blue marble, hurling through outer space, was born with thought, feeling, emotion. That's why I study it. And one thing right off the bat, feelings are never wrong. And they're never about other people. Say, I could feel his love for me. That's nice for a romantic novel cover, but it, it's not true. <laughs> you can't feel his love. He, he, he lets you feel so much that you let your guards down and you connect it with your higher self. That's what you feel. So that's kind of important. <laughs> but you feel your thoughts. You feel your emotions. So feelings are never wrong. So that's kind of your guidance system. That's the stable part. So 
uh, to get in touch with that, why you feel that way. Well, I'm thinking that way. Let's start with the thoughts. Well, I'm feeling this. I'm emoting out this way. I'm so emotional. Well, let's start there. But the feelings are never wrong. So once you get in, you know, this funnel that we all funnel everything through with, uh, it's very important to get in touch with that. Okay. Talk about that funnel for a minute. Um, well, uh, the, the thought, feeling, emotion funnel, you have a thought and it physically fires up a chemical reaction in the brain. That's what a thought is. And, and when that fires up, you feel that chemical. That's what a feeling is. And then you emote it out through your body. So that's why it seems so hard to change at first because that old lizard brain, that old river of thought, mm-hmm. I call it, just keeps firing, just keeps firing. Just, you know, if I, we said or did conscious therapy for weight loss, uh, for example, and you'd be like, oh, this is great. I'm going to start exercising tomorrow. Somebody comes over, hey, want to go out and get some ice cream? Sure, let's go. What happened? Wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not changed. It's, it's your conscious river of thought. So you have to go into the subconscious mind. And when you do that, there's 70 trillion cells in the body. They're all vibrating at a different level. So you have what I call new rivers of thought. And the more you practice that, the more it's going to – it's almost like when you, when you get good at it, like it's, something's missing. When I first went to a hypnotherapist way back in the day, I had uh, anger management issues. And the very first session, I remember this guy shoulder bumped me when I was going to my car. And I walked to my car and I put my keys in the door. I thought, I'd usually be really mad right there. Something's missing. I'm, I'm different. I got to look into this. This is, this is cool. So mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. almost like when you start to change, it's like the new you, the old you is not there. And it's like you have to start telling a new story. And, and you know, so many people are hooked to their story. They just tell the Oh, over whoa, and you know, over my parents, and over. parents were alcoholics, and now you oh, my God. I mean, I have to know the story because that's how I help them get out of it and change it. But, you know, they, as you know, they live the story, literally. It's like a, a diving suit. It's just something that they mm. just keep wearing it. Mm. They refuse to take it off. It is so close that, to their vest, chest, that, body. That's a great analogy. It reminds me of a client that literally he was, uh, he came to me, he's so cut off from his wife and his kids. And he, his, his mom dropped him off in, in uh, Times Square in New York, eight years old, and left. Mm. And I said, I just got chills. I said, listen, I said, that coat of armor you've been wearing your whole life, it served a purpose. Yep. It does not anymore. We're going to remove it. And we just had a, such a heavy session together. And yeah, it's just, I said, all behavior serves a purpose. And that suit of armor protected you from eight until now. So that's why it's still there. But you have to tell yourself when we do in subconscious and hypnotherapy, Thank you for being there. Thank you for protecting me and keeping me safe this whole time after I was abandoned. I don't need you anymore. And it was a very, very powerful session. Those usually are when you're dealing with something that deep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you certainly can't even do that unless the client is ready. Uh, sure. Close to it, you know, adjacent at least and, and willing to slide into the space that you create for them. Yeah, they're sick and tired of being sick and tired and <laughs> fed up with it all. <laughs> so there's got to be a way out. And, you know, like I said, hypnotherapy is usually the last resort, but it works. That's the good news. <laughs> yes. And before, when we were talking um, off stage, off camera, mm-hmm. you talked about disease and disease. Mm-hmm. Could yes. you talk about that again? Because I, I want those words to be on tape or whatever it is here that we're putting out in the universe um, so that people can hear this because I always tell my listeners, I'll say it now, um, mm-hmm. re-listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. And take notes because yeah. you're you don't hear everything you think you heard, right? And um, you know I read a lot, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm mean, you know mm-hmm. a book every other day at the at the least, and mm-hmm. I find since I'm running out of books in my genres that I'm rereading books from a few years ago, and I find things that I've missed. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you will miss something. So people who are listening, when you're done with this, if you're listening in your car, wherever it is, even if you're on your desktop, listen to this again and have a pad and pen next to you. It is much more effective to write down your notes rather than to type them onto a Word document because it doesn't work. It doesn't get into your brain and your body and your system as easily as it does when you write by hand. Mm-hmm. So there is a connection there. So talk about that disease that I asked you, that I interrupted you about. No, I will. But I give everyone the tip. I always have my phone with me. And whether I'm running or meditating, I just, when that idea pops up, I call it original thought, especially in meditation. They record it. Believe me, 10 minutes later, hour later, you're not going to remember the way it came through because it came through. It is came through, thought. right. Exactly. You didn't make it up. 
it came through, came down and go, Oh my God, I got, I do it all the time. I look for my phone. Oh my God, I got to record this. So yeah. yeah. Record this. I, I totally understand. I usually, when I'm watching television, I'll hear something and I'll, you know, okay, got to, you know, put this on the phone. And then when I'm in bed at night, I have pads of paper by my bedside mm -hmm. and I'm always taking notes. If you saw my desk right now, I have yellow pads all over the place. I love them. Um, and I've got, you know, I have to, I, I would not remember. I've read stuff that I wrote years ago and I, I don't remember that. Where did that come from? Yeah, Me? Yeah. yeah, it's funny. My wife said something about my desk. I have post-it notes everywhere, two, three clipboards. And <laughs> I said, no, it looks, it looks a mess, but I know where everything's at. I have to put this stuff down so I can. <laughs> so well, the creative mind does not have a neat desk. No, God, no. <laughs> it's been proven. I mean, it's true. It's just that right brain does not have a neat desk. Even if you're a total brain, you probably don't have a neat desk because you need to have that activity. If it's well, too, you know, yeah. it has to be active. Your desk is active. Yeah. Yeah. So the this ease, uh, I, I do a lot of uh, play on words a lot because we're, the answers are right in the the, the title. Disease is. Disease. That's we call it disease for a reason. When the when the mind is not at ease, uh, it it triggers a fight or flight. The mind can only handle so much; it dumps it into the body. The body feels it, fight or flight. The heart rate kicks up a little bit, dumps it back into the mind. The mind starts going faster. And this is I'm doing a big circle. This is at, at what I call anxiety circle. It's it's the fight or flight is racing so high. I have clients that were coming over to me and they pull over to the side of the road. I, I think I'm having a heart attack. I have to go to the hospital. I said, take a deep breath. I park the car. I said, I know what you're going through. There's a way out. We can reverse that. But when, when, the, when, the, when the mind keeps dumping it in the body, what happens is the body can only handle so much also. So the cells literally start dying. That's what dis-ease is. The, when the mind is so out of balance and dis-ease is happening, we literally killing our body. And, and if you think about the fight or flight, we literally have – blood rushing to the arms and legs and we're getting all fighty and flighty and if you're staying if it's not real present danger which it is not most of the time what happens is the visceral organs don't have blood flowing through them like they should so they're open for more disease so it's just it compounds upon itself so you cannot have disease in the body when the mind is at ease it's just impossible that's just the same reason you can't have anxiety when the mind is at ease because the same thing that dumps it into the body which you get anxious about that's why I always start with the breath work, three deep breaths, because even when you don't feel like you're in control of anything, you're always in control of your breath work, even though it doesn't feel like that. If yeah. you took three deep breaths as long as you could and held them as long as you could, you would slow down. It just, that's the way the system works. For those who yeah. believe in God, he gave you those lungs for a reason, people. Yep. Yep. They're not just there to take up, and you notice that they are the, next to the skin, they are the largest organ. So they're large for a reason. That means you can take a deep breath down to your, down to your bottom. I mean, right. the yes. whole body can breathe. When I tell people take a deep breath and they go, <gasps> it's like no, that's not even a gasp. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. you've got to breathe properly. Yeah, so. I want people to be able to get in touch with you, and I understand on your website, which is called bestanxietysolution.com. Yes. Okay, that you have a gift there, which you're going to tell them about? I do. I have a free PDF guide, um, the five uh, solutions to getting rid of anxiety, and also they can join my private Facebook group, The Stress-Free Society, where I do, I'm doing it tonight, uh, well, well, Wednesday nights, uh, live meditation every, every week on, in the group. So uh, that's, that's another gift they could enjoy. Okay, so if you want to email Kelly, you can do so at, at globalmindstretch at gmail.com. Yes. I don't think I have to spell that, Global Mind Stretch. And his website address is bestanxietysolution.com, and I would think everybody would want to go there. I'm going to make sure that your website address is on the page that I uh, put on my website with your website your podcast so sure. that people that are reading um, doing so on law on their desktop or whatever can also download it from the page. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for being here today because this has been really important for people to listen to. Is there anything you want to say last minute words besides breathe? Yeah. One more thing comes to mind because like the new client I'm working with, he has bouts of depression. It's another 
word that I use, depression. We're depressing down on our own emotions so much so that, again, that anxiety circle kicks into gear. And depression, usually we're pressing down from anger, anger on ourselves, anger that we didn't make the right decision or we could have done something better. And it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. Like my client the other day, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, I do. It feels like nobody knows what you're going through. And if you feel that, know that there's solutions, know that there's people out there to help. There's people that I've been through extreme anxiety. That's why I put my program together. So no matter how small your circle is or how much you're freaking out or you can't catch your breath and it feels like the walls are caving in, there is help. There is people that there are people out there that have been through it that can help you. Okay, listeners, Kelly Fisher, K-E-L-L-Y-F-I-S-H-E-R. Here he is, renowned hypnotherapist. You can also find him on Facebook at The Stress-Free Society. That's four words, The Stress-Free Society Group. Join his group. He's on LinkedIn, and he has a couple of other Facebook mm-hmm. links that I have, haven't checked out myself, so we'll deal with that later. And I want to thank you, Kelly, for being here. This has been a great interview. You put out great information, and you're of great benefit to the people who are listening. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm, I appreciate you as well. Take care, everybody, and have a great day. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.